This is episode 37 of the Magic Detective Podcast. On this episode, I talk about a great rivalry between two modern-day escape artists. That and more on this episode of the Magic Detective Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Magic Detective Podcast. I'm your host, Dean Carnegie. I am the Magic Detective, and this is episode 37, and it's a good one. Well, actually, I think they're all good, Um, but today I'm going to share with you a story that you've likely never heard of before, and it just so happens it uh, involves two friends of mine that were fairly well known to the magic community. And speaking of friends of mine, I want to send out a big a belated happy birthday to my friend Adele. That would be Adele Friel Rindris. She was uh, well known in the magic world as an assistant to Harry Blackstone Sr. back in the day. And uh, she's uh, kind of a regular fixture among the collectors and the the um, uh, magic history community. So... Uh, it's always nice to see Adele. I haven't seen her in a couple of years. Last time I stopped by her house, uh, my friend Denise and I stopped by to see her for a bit. And just around her birthday, actually, the last time we were there. So um, happy birthday, Adele. I hope you're doing well and um, hope to see you soon. All right. So today's podcast is a, it's a little different. I'm going to share with you. Uh, a story about two men that I knew personally. One was a very, very good friend of mine for years, and the other, uh, he and I became friends near the end of his life. Specifically, I want to share with you an event from the lives of these two men. So I'm going to give you kind of a condensed biography of both of them, and then I will share that mutual event. Both of these individuals were escape artists. They were rivals, bitter enemies, who actually came to respect each other very much. The first was Norman Bigelow from New England. Norm was born August 12, 1944. His real name was Henry Herbert, and he later changed it after being adopted. Norm was an apprentice to Frank Renaud, who performed professionally as the great Reno. Norm was a big fan of Houdini and studied his career inside and out. He had many theories about Houdini's life, some of which were considered very controversial, but Norm always stood by his opinions. I believe he broke new ground in a number of areas on Houdini, and we all owe him a debt of gratitude. Besides being a student of Houdini in Reno, Norm was an accomplished escape artist. He was also very creative in his field. He gave rise to the full-view picking technique, which is today, it's the standard used by almost every escape artist. During his career, Norm created a number of very unique escapes, including the Doors of Death and Trial by Fire. The Doors of Death was something quite harrowing in appearance because, by all accounts, there was nothing gimmicked or tricked about the apparatus. Basically, there was a frame on which the escape artist was locked, handcuffed, roped, and chained. Hinged to this frame was a door, and... On that was a very large industrial strength spring. The door was covered with knives pointing outwards. The escape artist had to free himself before the timer went off, releasing the catch and allowing the door to slam into the performer, thus injuring or even possibly causing fatal harm to him. Norm had several close calls over the years, receiving some cuts and bruises. I remember him showing me a shirt that uh, was all bloodied. And of course, it was dried blood now, but uh, and it was from one of these uh, mishaps with the doors of death. His trial by fire escape was another unique piece. It involved a stool that the performer was handcuffed to. The stool had kind of a ramp that sloped down to one side, and and, and along this was a string of gunpowder. And actually, the gunpowder ran down the ramp and uh, further down to another distant spot. There was a pile of gunpowder under the hands of the escape artists on that stool that I had mentioned. And the challenge was to free yourself 
before being burnt alive by the fiery gunpowder. So at the far end, they would light the gunpowder, it would flare up, and it would run uh, its course all the way up the ramp and eventually to the stool. And uh, fortunately for, uh, for Norm, he would get out just at the last second. It was a very dramatic escape. This was the opener of his escape act. This escape was later recreated by Mario Manzini, with Norm's permission. Norm was a locksmith by trade, but devoted many years to the performance and perfection of escape artistry. He began Escape Masters Magazine and the International Association of Escape Artists, for which he was president for a number of years. He published many books with his escape methods and theories, he had his own course in escapology, which relied almost exclusively on skill over gimmickry. There is no doubt Norm was a hardcore escape artist. Norm's legacy can be seen today on the internet. There are videos of his Doors of Death escape and his own unique twist on the water torture cell, which he presented on national TV on the show To Tell the Truth. One of the big highlights of Norm's career was when David Copperfield contacted him about doing a building escape that Norm had created. Sure enough, on one of Copperfield's specials, he presented a thrilling escape from an imploding building, and the whole concept was Norm Bigelow's. The next escape artist was Steve Baker. Steve was born in East St. Louis, Illinois, on July 26, 1938. As a child... Steve came down with rheumatic fever and was confined to bed, and in this time he was given a book on Houdini and devoured the contents. When he eventually overcame his illness, he began to challenge neighborhood kids to tie him up or chain him up so that he could practice the escapes that he had read about in Houdini's biographies. Steve was known professionally as Mr. Escape, having discovered the name in the pages of the Stranko Escape issue of Genie magazine. Steve contacted Stranko and asked for permission to use the name, and in 1967, after getting national coverage for an upside-down straitjacket escape in Oakland, California, Mr. Escape was born. Steve, too, created a number of unique escapes, including his tug-of-war rope tie, his death race escape, the coffin of death, and his own trial by fire. The tug-of-war rope tie was something he created in his youth, having stumbled upon the method strictly by accident. It's an extremely convincing rope tie, mainly because it's a 100% real. Yet, despite being tied amazingly tight by two spectators, the escapist can free himself in a matter of seconds. Steve told me he taught the tug of war rope tie to three individuals. One was Tony Clark, another was Andrew Basso, and the third was yours truly. Now, the coffin of death first appeared in the Houston Astrodome. The effect was the escape artist would be handcuffed uh, and chained inside of a coffin. A large paper-covered box would go over the coffin, and off in the distance was an automobile with some sort of battering ram on the front. This automobile would rev its engines and then come speeding at the coffin as fast as possible, completely demolishing the coffin in the process. The escape artist would jump free from the paper covering at the last possible second. It was a pretty dramatic escape. Next came uh, Death Race, which I think was created for a TV show hosted by Dick Clark. It took a page from the coffin of death, except this time the escape artist could, would be chained to the side of one car. He was in full view the whole time, while another car was off in the distance that came barreling down towards the car he was chained to. Once again, at the last possible second, the escape artist jumped free. Now, Steve's escape, called Trial by Fire, was very different from Norm Bigelow's. The only thing that made them the same is they shared the same name. Other than that, they were completely different. In Steve's, he was chained to a post, and this was inside of sort of a teepee-like structure. And the teepee would be doused with some sort of flammable liquid and then set on fire. And, of course, he had to escape before the whole thing burnt up. Um, I've never been a fan of any type of escape to do with fire at all. And uh, I have a feeling Steve feels the same way. If you go back and listen to episode three of the podcast, you'll hear of this particular escape, Trial by Fire, 
um, having gone wrong in Caracas, Venezuela. And I cover it um, pretty extensively, and it's pretty frightening. So check that out on episode three of the podcast. Steve was a regular fixture of TV in the 1970s and 80s. He performed a breathtaking recreation of Houdini's water torture cell on the NBC show Dick Clark Live Wednesday. Years later, when Dick Clark had gone over to CBS, he had another variety show. He brought Steve on numerous times on this show. On one occasion, Steve did another underwater escape from a tank of water, and I believe that the tank of water he used that time was the same tank that Doug Henning used to make a shark appear. I think Steve told me this. I have to check my notes, but I think that's what he told me. Over the years, Steve Baker and Norm Bigelow would fight and argue. It was probably friendly rivalry at first, but eventually became rather bitter. Lots of name-calling and angry words were shared until one day I came along and I tried to patch things up between the two of them. I talked to Norm and I talked to Steve separately and I told them, look, you guys, you got to put an end to this fighting. You're the elder statesman of escapes and frankly, you should be respectful towards each other. After talking with both of them and getting them to talk together, we devised this idea of a challenge for them to partake in, which would feed off their rivalry and with any luck get people interested in escapes and, you know, in their careers and in the challenge as well. Norm challenged Steve with a pair of his own King Breaker handcuffs, something no one could escape from, according to Norm Bigelow. Steve challenged Norm with his own creation, something he called the Escape Proof Challenge Belt, which was a clever variation on the Tom Horn Belt. In fact, the challenge belt that Norm used belonged to me. Uh, Much time was spent trying to iron out the conditions of this challenge and uh, and, like things like where it was going to be and when it was going to take place. And as you might imagine, things fell apart at one point. Actually, things fell apart at many points, but I was usually able to patch it back. I created a website for the uh, challenge, and every couple weeks, a flyer would be put up, much like those that Houdini used for challenges. I tried to recreate those, and, uh, and I made a ton of them. And Norm loved this idea. He was so enthusiastic about it. He wanted to have them all printed and sold, but I, I didn't see where it was going to be financially feasible to have... I don't know how many of these things, 50 or more, uh, printed up. I just was like, no, I don't think so. Uh, Unless, of course, we made a really big deal out of this thing, and that was yet to be seen. At one point, we had guaranteed TV coverage and a location where we could sell tickets. And that fell through. Then I had trouble getting things I needed, simple things like photos of the two men, for example. Ugh. I eventually got some pictures of Norm uh, wearing the challenge belt, and um, and he gave me some publicity photos. Steve, who I had been friends with for many, many years, I never got any photos from him other than his original publicity photos, but I, I kept telling him I need current photos from today, and he never got them. The two wanted this thing to be like a, a grand prize fight, but... Unfortunately, the interest just wasn't there. Few outside the magic community knew who Steve Baker and Norm Bigelow were. Had Dick Clark not had his stroke, we might have been able to get the kind of coverage they wanted, but that was seemingly out of the question. Then traveling became an issue. Basically, it was money that became an issue. So I suggested that they both videotape their escapes they could have a committee present to prove everything was legit if they wanted and i still hold out hope that we could get the two men together to do this live the video idea was more of a backup plan just in case and in the end we had to go with the video and if memory serves yeah actually yeah i do remember um steve was actually very sick the day that we would have done the live escape so i guess it worked out in the long run thankfully they had both already videotaped their spots as to the challenge well i told them if we're going to do it we have to do it right the winner was the winner plain and simple the the deal was 
the escapes would be timed. They had to be done in full view, no editing of the tapes. If they both failed to free themselves, it was a draw, you know, no harm, no foul. If they freed themselves, uh, both freed themselves, it was a tie. If only one could get free, well, then that person was the victor, kind of the winner take all. So in this case, it was the title, World's Greatest Escape Artist, though in truth, it really should have been the world's oldest living escape artist. And that's not a dig on either man. It was just the truth. Both of them would make grand claims that they could still do all the escapes that made them famous. In fact, Steve was the <laughs> Steve was the worst on this. He was walking around with a cane and oxygen, but he would tell me firmly, no question, I could still do the coffin of death if I had the right deal. Ugh. Okay. You may be wondering who won the challenge contest. Well, one day I will share that along with the video. But Norm and Steve both requested that I keep silent until the 20-year anniversary of the challenge. October 31st, 2019 was the 10-year anniversary of their challenge, which is why I decided to share the story with you now. And I had no idea 10 years ago that I'd have this sort of outlet to share the story. So it's kind of... Uh, kind of cool that I have this opportunity to share this with people, especially if you knew Norm or Steve. They were both larger-than-life characters, both very interesting individuals, um, both with their own demons and their, their troubles, but uh, I really respected and liked them both very, very much, and I miss them very much. Long live the champions of escape. Now, by the way, I would encourage you to Google the name Norman Bigelow Escape Artist and check out the videos of Norm doing his signature routines. Also, please Google Steve Baker, Mr. Escape, and you'll see a bunch of Steve's great escapes. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Magic Detective Podcast. If you did, please remember to like and share the podcast. If you listen on iTunes, consider giving me a five-star review. And until next time, I'm Dean Carnegie. I am the Magic Detective. Have a great week.